Hello, welcome to my November reading wrap up. This is going to be a really short video because I only read six books in November apparently, which I don't, that's like a really low amount for me. I listened to two audiobooks and I read four physical copies. I'm going to start with the first one I read in the month, which was The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. And this book was actually first published in the 60s. Uh, I thought it was just, I thought it was written recently and then written from a perspective in the 60s, but no, it was written in the 60s. And this book is about a, uh, the main character's mental health. And the story is really interesting. It starts out with, she's a college student. It starts out with her going to New York as an intern at a magazine. And throughout her time in New York, we start... We start the story with her in New York interning and we see her summer in New York and we see her return to her parents' place where she also attends college. And we see her kind of drop out of college and her mental health spiral even more and she ends up in an institution. And to be honest, I, oh yeah, I do, I remember how the book ends, I won't say, but it was, I think for its time, it's a very, very good and what's the word? Like, I don't think many people wrote stories about mental health back in the 60s. So I thought that was really, really uh, groundbreaking for the time, I guess. But the story itself and the way it was written and the characters in the book, I didn't care for it. So I just gave the book a uh, one out of five. But I think if it does interest you, you should read it. I wouldn't not recommend it to people, but I just didn't love it. The second book of the month was also an audiobook. It was Hydra by Matt Wesolowski. This is the second book in the six story series. So um, you don't need to read the first book to read the second one. It's just that it follows the same podcast. So these books are about a man who does podcasts about, um, he revisits murders. So it's a true crime podcast. So the second one, Hydra, is about the murders of a mom, dad, and sister done by their daughter. And he just revisits this murder from six different perspectives. That's why it was called Six Stories the first one and we learn you know did she actually murder her family should she be convicted of this crime or not like what is the truth and I loved it I gave it a four to five I think I gave the first one a four to five or a five out of five I can't remember but I love both of them I think they are great I highly recommend them especially the audiobooks I think any book that is written in a podcast format is really, really good as an audiobook. But I did recently read, it's gonna come up. I actually read a book for the first time that had like a podcast in it, which I also enjoyed, but I'll talk about that later. The third book of the month, this is why I didn't read many books in September, in November, is because of this book right here. This was Endgame. Bobby Fischer's Remarkable Rise and Fall from America's Brightest Prodigy to the Edge of Madness. This is a biography of Bobby Fischer, who was America's uh, chess champion and world chess champion in the 70s. Uh, it was written by Frank Brady. I gave this a four to five. It's a nonfiction, obviously. It's a biography. It's quite long. Um, I, could, I could see someone describing it as dry, I didn't find it dry per se, but there was a lot of detail, which I appreciated. I could I could see some people maybe critiquing like there was too much detail and too little too many little things, but I thought it was written very very well. I thought this man, Frank Brady, did great great job with his research, and I think he tried to be very neutral throughout the entire story. There are some points in the story where you might think he was being biased or leaning towards one side, but overall, I think he was pretty neutral, which, you know, is best when you're reading a biography. I st I think I started reading this book, like, right at the beginning of November, like, you know, November 1st or at the end of October, and it took me two weeks, because I finished this November 14th. 
so it took me two weeks to finish this book just because I don't know it's just it's a long biography and sometimes you want to switch it up with a fiction or something but I kept trying to push through so I found that even when I was sitting at home um, I wasn't picking up the book to read in my free time I was doing something else because I wasn't super super duper into it but I finished it and I'm glad I did the fourth book of the month was my book for book club it's called twice in a blue moon by Christina Lauren we follow it's a romance so we follow our main character the story starts she's 18 years old she's in London with her grandma and they meet um, a grandpa traveling with his grandson and they essentially fall in love um, over the week they spend in London something happens they separate they don't speak again for about 12 years and they reappear in each other's lives um, is it a chance for revenge is it a second chance to find a second chance at love uh, I really liked it I gave it a four to five I think it, I think Christina Lauren is a really really good romance writer I really enjoy her stories and the character she creates and the situation she put her, her characters in like romantically so I definitely recommend reading that one and then I read The Dinner List by Rebecca Searle I gave this one a three to five it was on my to read list for a really long time the premise is basically you've played the game before choose you know five people you'd want to have dinner with she gets to have dinner with those five people and each of them, you know, they have this big conversation that focuses around her, the love of her life, but they also discuss other parts of her life, like, you know, her relationship with her father and her career, things like that. And everyone kind of gives their, their input and it's a lot about closure as well. I, I, I only give it a three to five, like I liked it. Uh, and I would really recommend it. I would like to read another story similar. Like I find that idea very intriguing of having dinner with five people alive or dead. And what do you talk about? Where does the night go? So I think it would be really, really cool if the author kept doing this storyline over and over, but in different scenarios with different people in different situations. And finally, the last book of November was I Know You Know by... Is it Jilly McMillan or Gilly McMillan? I gave this one a three out of five. This one was written in podcast uh, format. Podcast, I don't think that's a thing. Podcast format. The book is about a podcast. And I actually can't remember what it's about. So that's why I didn't get a four or five, four stars or five stars. Because if I can't remember, that kind of says something. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. I just read the little description on Goodreads. So basically, this young guy, no, 30, 25, 30, he starts a podcast and the podcast is about the murder of his two best friends when he was 11 years old. Um, there was a, a murderer convicted of the crime when he was, you know, when it happened when they were 11 and he's revisiting this because he thinks the man who convict who was convicted is innocent and he wants to revisit kind of reopen the case and see is this the truth or not so it is similar to the one I also read this month Hydra I think Hydra is better um but I know you know was also good I read it pretty fast I think I read it in two or three days um enjoyable so Yes, those were the six books I read in November. I can't believe I read so little. I was really shocked when I popped up my Goodreads here to film this and saw that I only read six, but that's okay. I still far surpassed my reading goal for the year, so I'm just going to keep reading, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.